Hello guys and welcome for another video of Eternum. In today's video I will go over 20 PvP tips which I think are extremely important and will completely change your game if you use them correctly. Quick reminder that you can support the channel not only in here in YouTube but you can also join my Discord community channel. There we can discuss different builds, guides and much more related not only to Eternum but also other games that I play. Without wasting more time, let's dive into the tips by starting with number 20, Stamina Management. Starting off with probably the most important component in PvP, the stamina is one of the things that you have to manage perfectly in order to get good at the game. Managing healthy levels of stamina is extremely important in your fights, as if you hit zero, you will become vulnerable to everyone who noticed that. Losing the ability to dodge stronger abilities and crowd controls from the enemies and being slow by the effect of losing your stamina will definitely have a huge advantage to your opponents, so try to avoid that. Number 19. Blocking. This is one of the essential skills which makes the difference in many fights. Being able to use block for certain abilities by predicting the attack pattern of your enemy can give you a huge advantage over them. Many of the abilities and the hits in the game can be blocked by all weapons and it will cost you way less stamina than a normal dodge. Number 18. Heavy attacks. The counterpart of the previous tip is of course the heavy attack. While a lot of people know that, there are still many who don't respect this mechanic. If you see someone blocking, regardless if he's wearing a shield or not, make sure to apply heavy attacks as they will penetrate his block stance way faster. Number 17. Dodging. Dodging becomes part of your habit while playing the game regardless if that would be into PvP or PvE. However, in different loadouts, it is essential to learn how to properly dodge. For light users as example, this can be done for gaining distance and kiting or in attempt to chase someone down, while for heavier players dodging becomes reserved mostly for heavy crowd control abilities. Number 16. Sidestepping. Taking it to the next level, I cannot pass to mention the sidestepping. This is something that is hard to master but eventually, when done properly, the difference can be felt instantly. It is used mainly by ranged players while having a fight with another ranged player, but many times it is part of the arsenal of a melee user while approaching the so-called ranged. Pressing W is the key for your wins but adding a bit of sidestepping as well is necessary for sure. Number 15. Animation cancel. I think it's pretty obvious what this is about. Many weapons excel even further with their abilities and combos for damage when they are done properly in combination with quick animation cancellations. This of course is something that requires precision and a lot of practice before pulling it regularly without any effort. Number 14. Positioning. I think everyone knows how important positioning is, but still it is good to remind ourselves from time to time about it. A healer in the front line or a tank in the back line is not what we should aim for. Therefore, make sure to always pay attention to your surroundings and the positioning in the current battle. Number 13. Baiting. Now, this might sound a bit crazy for many, but believe me, there is no better feeling than baiting some enemies to pile on you so you can only turn into them with your teammates and kill them all. It of course has its own risks, but once you get to know the limits of your character, this stunt can be pulled quite often. Healers probably are the best ones to do that as they are usually the priority focus of the opponents. And speaking about priority focus, let's go over number 12. Prioritizing targets. In different games, players always focus the strongest opponents first as if they manage to kill them, their win is almost guaranteed. In a turnum, it might be a bit more complicated but there is still some kind of order of targets, especially if you are playing as a DPS. The first and probably most common target is the enemy healer. As he will be able to keep all your opponents alive, he must be targeted as quickly as possible. Next to the healers are the enemy DPS players and note that this can include both melee and ranged users as there is quite a lot of assassin builds which are using melee weapons and we should not only prioritize the ranged ones. Last of course are the bruisers and the tanks as they usually serve as a frontline wall with not that big of a threat but more to disrupt and to give some crowd control. Number 11. Awareness. When playing more and more PvP, a person starts to build a feeling for his surrounding during his fights. 
Essentially, at a later stage, he knows the probability of certain outcomes in the fight before it even happens. This is mainly due to the awareness that we build up and with the experience and quick valuation of scenarios that are surrounding us. As we got halfway through the video, let me know if you like such tips about the game. In the comments, you can give me an idea of what else you would like to see. Now let's jump back for the remaining tips. Number 10. Team comps and settings. Getting more into the group side of things, I cannot pass to mention how important is the communication between your party members. In order to make that easier, there are just few options which will increase your chances of not losing yourself and also to keep track of your group. Number 9. Micro goals. Regardless if you play Arena, OPR Battleground, War or even Mass Open World PvP, you should always set micro goals with your team for your upcoming steps. Communicating specific targets and letting the others know about your intentions is something that can help a lot to improve your results. Letting them know when you will drink your next potion or saying that your fireball is on cooldown however doesn't help much, so try to limit your comms to the most essential things and try to make them clean as possible. Number 8. Macro goals. The main difference between micro and macro goals are the number of players executing the prepared tactic. This can only be seen in wars due to their nature of mass 50 against 50 battles. Before each war there is a plan and goal which everyone tries to do at his best. Make sure to know your role and purpose as you don't want to be wandering around in the middle of the fight thinking about what you had to do. Number 7. Win is better than KDA. Dying in any game is not fun. Nobody wants to look at his score and to see many deaths. However, sometimes a death or two can be a good thing if behind them there was a bigger play which led your team to eventually win the game. Sometimes it is even worth it to die in order to save your healer, as if you don't, eventually all your team members will be at risk without a healer. Kills and kills to death ratio is not always the factor, so try to have that in mind. Number 6. Helping. As we already opened the topic of team play and assisting someone in need, helping is the second part of that. If you are able to provide cover or to serve as a short distraction to the enemies who are chasing your teammate, make sure to do your job. This will not be left unnoticed and the person will try to give it back by saving your life the next time. Number 5. Defense over damage. There are a lot of builds which can turn into killing machines, but all of them lack one thing and this is the defense. In most cases, if you are unable to avoid perfectly the incoming damage, you will be dead in no time. That's why it is always good to go with a bit more safer approach and to invest a bit more into survivability. You always do more damage while you are alive than being dead, remember that. Number 4. Resistance. Stepping foot into the variation of the builds and the respective defense stats, I cannot explain how much of an importance are the resistance of each player. As you cannot have all types of resistance at high numbers, it is crucial to understand the type of damage which you will face in your fights. This way you can increase the potential resistance of your character by slotting the correct combination of gems in your armors and jewelry so you can have the advantage over your opponent. Number 2. Perk Distribution The mechanical skill level and the potential of each player is different. However, having the correct perks and bonuses in your gear can give you so much that it can be considered as the most important thing in PvP. Always make sure to have the correct perks for your build of choice, as this can basically make you up to 2 times stronger. Number 1. Weapon Combos the game does not limit anyone into using specific combination of weapons or abilities. You can be a healer wearing an axe or an archer wearing a staff. As long as you know what exactly you want to achieve, everything is possible. However, make sure that in one way or another your weapons can build up some synergy as if they don't it will probably end up as a bad build and it will not be as you were imagining it. Bonus tip. Understanding your role. From all the tips mentioned so far, you can tell that PvP requires a good preparation and a deeper understanding in order to achieve high results. One other thing that can lead to this as well is the understanding of your specific role. If you are a mage for example and there is a beefy guy with a tower shield in front of you, you should probably try to avoid him at all costs as your attacks will just tickle him. In that case, your job is to find a better angle towards the vulnerable enemy targets 
which will be way easier for you to handle. On the other hand, his job is to annoy you with his presence and basically to disrupt you from doing any damage. A reference to cat and mouse game can always fit in such cases. That's it from me guys, I hope you enjoyed those tips for the PvP in Eternum and I wish that you will be able to apply them to your games. Don't forget that practice makes perfect. If you wish to support the channel feel free to do so by subscribing to it and if you want to discuss any topic outside of the comment section feel free to join my discord community server for which you will find the link in the description below. Have a nice one and I will see you on the next one.